Hello, I'm going to introduce you to model sim using a very small design, which is a finite state machine that detects sequences. And it's going to be uh, starting with this folder. You can see I'm going to show you in a graphical form what the state machine looks like. So here we have a sequence, two sequences that we want to detect. And the way this uh, state machine works is we have five states. We begin with state zero and we progress through uh, the states as the data stream comes in. So reading left to right. Um, when we look at it uh, conventionally, there is an input shown and then a slash and then the output. The state machine has a flip-flop to store actually a couple of them to store the results of the detection. And it's starting uh, with a zero on the output, obviously, signifying non-detect. So if we get a pattern that is not in this sequence, such as one, as you can see, the first cannot be a one, first data cannot be a one, we return to state zero. If we receive a progressive uh, state uh, vector, uh, for example, a zero, then we progress to state one. And notice the blue uh, numbers here. This is just to keep track of what we have seen. So if we've seen a zero, we in state one. If we see another zero, we land on state two. And if we see yet another zero, signified by this zero, 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 we're now in state three. And notice that we're very close to achieving this sequence of zero, 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 one, the second sequence. If we do receive a one, we have achieved sequence two. And now, so we're done with that sequence and we land in uh, state four. And in state four, we our history shows it zero, 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 one, but notice that the pattern zero, zero, one is also coincident with sequence one, part of it, if we receive another zero. So if in state four, if we get another zero, which is this guy here, we're now gonna be in the sequence one done as well. So we completed both sequences. All the other transitions here show basically a failure of achieving the sequence. And you can follow that yourself. And um, some of them come back to this through this route. Okay, let me now go to the example FSM coded in VHDL. You can see here uh, the FSM has an input clock a reset, active low, and a start. So the start really is to turn the FSM on or off. And um, the next data input is the sequence itself. And then the state machine outputs two uh, outputs, sequence one detect and sequence two detect. Okay, there actually um, is a little more detail here. If uh, the two kinds of state machines, there's a Moore, which in which the outputs are determined only by the current state. This is the case here. But there's another kind, which is called Mealy, is when the outputs are determined by current inputs, as well as the current state. Here, we can see upon um, reset, that we want to begin in state zero. So state vector here uh, stores our um, enumerated state types. And it's important to re reset the state machine and its output vectors. Now, let's take the case we went through the bubble diagram there. This really is the same, uh, but coded in VHDL. 
But what I would like to point out is that you want to catch, in other words, you want to be rigorous about catching the uh, data sequences and be explicit about whether it's zero or one and also the status of the uh, state machine, where, whether it's on or off. If you don't do this, you do run into bugs and issues where some states uh, are not defined or you have unknowns um, and you, they can propagate. So it's important to be explicit. And if you look back at the video, you could see that the bubble diagram is really what is represented here in HDL. All right, so the imp in interesting parts here are that when we do detect the right sequence, we turn this flag on and this is passed out to the uh, component. Let's now look at the test bench. Test bench uh, on the left. Uh, okay, by the way, I uh, want to point out that test benches do not have any input or output ports, obviously. And um, it's instantiating the same component that we defined here in the entity is now a component instantiated. And um, these signals that are defined here are test bench signals. They're not anything that is inside the entity uh, or architecture of the entity, but they are used in the test bench or passed to the test bench in general. So uh, clock here is defined below. Uh, we have a 20 nanosecond time period, uh, 50 megahertz clock. This is the mapping of the signals on the right hand side on the test bench and on the left hand side is the component or entity defined here. That's just a convention. Uh, you can have the same names or you can put more meaningful names, test bench related on this side. Here's the clock generation as I just mentioned earlier. And now most interestingly is the stimulus process. So this stimulus is what will drive the device under test. And um, what I've done here is broken into two parts where I can, uh, in subsequent runs, turn the FSM on or off. And it's important that after a sequence has been sent, that I do a reset so that I can accept new sequences. Now you can handle this in many different ways. For example, if you have a, a success in the FSM itself, you could have um, set a signal that uh, resets everything here. But for simplicity, you want to do this at the test bench level and study how the behavior of this. Okay, let me now go to the command line. And vSIM is really a model sim. And we're going to do this, uh, run this FSM compile do. Let me show you what that does, introduce you to that. The FSM compile do is really um, a script that uh, you can customize. Here we are just seeding to this di uh, directory and looking for work, the existing uh, work directory and cleaning it up basically, deleting any existing work directory. And vlib is a model sim command to generate work directory. And then vcom, in the case of vhdl, is the compile, uh, essentially a elaboration uh, ish, um, step. If you're using Verilog, it would be vlog. And you have to compile in a certain order, obviously, uh, the definition of FSM comes before the test bench definition. Uh, what I would like to point out is I'm using model sim Intel FPGA edition, which does not support the vopt command, which is uh, actually very useful. It can do certain uh, things that um, are more advanced, such as um, speeding up the compile by optimizing the design. Uh, also, it supports a debug uh, DB 
creates a debug database so you can do interactive simulation where you can rewind time, for example, or find drivers and uh, essentially with um, debug, there's another thing called um, data flow where you can trace certain variable values and ask the tool to tell you where in time the values had changed to those values. I mean, those advanced debugging uh, and schematics uh, capabilities such as FSM debug and FSM analysis, you could see bubble diagrams drawn by the tool as we drew ourselves. You could, the tool can do that for you, but that's not available in this version. And um, so, so I've commented those out. But here we're compiling the uh, FSM TB unit. And the do wave command, essentially, if you go in and model sim and save all your signals, um, waveforms as, as you would like to view them, you can now then save the wave.do and execute it subsequently. So it, it populates it for you. Uh, this is not important, view signals and structure. Uh, but here, we're going to run this design for 500 nanoseconds. All right, let me run this here and we can see what uh, the simulation uh, results are. So it's now uh, compiling and running the simulation after compilation. And uh, what I like to do is when this comes up is zoom full. And once you do that, you can see two sections here. The top is the FSM TB signals and the bottom part here, I am opened up the FSM unit. And the reason I did that, now there's duplication of course, but the reason I did it is the state diagram or states which are enumerated types are only visible on the unit side. So we could see here uh, what's happening to the states. Now, you look at the state, the start, sorry, and also look at the uh, sequence, the data sequence, and the reset. So when the design is, has been, you know, it's active low reset. So this is where the design has been reset and the start happens later, a few cycles later. And all that is controlled by this um, test bench here. So let's look at when the start happens and then every rising clock edge will be where the data is read, right? So, sorry about that. So we have this rising edge and we look at the sequence. You can pay attention to this value here. So we have a zero and then we have another zero. Again, look here and then another zero, and then we have a one. So that's what we sent. And what we expect is a, a zero, uh, zero, zero, one, zero, right? I'm sorry, we expect a, um, sequence two to be detected here because this pattern zero, 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 one has occurred. And we see that indeed um, sequence two has been detected and the states have moved to S4, if you recall from the diagram, but we have not detected sequence one yet until we put in uh, the last, uh, the, this zero here. So if you go back to our waveform, let's look at the data here. And now that's zero. When that zero comes in, we are now processing or uh, we are satisfied with this uh, zero here. And that's this sequence one. And that's when you see sequence one detection going up. <clears throat> the way I've written this stimulus is after I've put in all my sequence, I'm going to go ahead and reset the design again, prepare it for the next sequence, which is why you see the state at this reset. When I do this uh, reset here, and goes up and it's sensitive to clock edge. Uh, we now, um, when the reset low at this clock edge, 
it's hard to align sometimes, it goes to state zero. Now we're ready and we're, um, you can do multiple simulations where you've basically turned off the enable here. It's interesting to turn this off to zero and then watch what happens. It, it will ignore all of these, but in this case, it's running it. So it's gonna process the next. And what happens now is we go through the same steps and um, when we look at our data at every clock edge after the reset bar has gone up, uh, we're gonna see the first, first clock edge here, zero. Again, look over at the sequence, zero here, and then another zero, and then one, and then zero. So we should be seeing zero, zero, one, and a zero, sequence one. And that's exactly what we see, sequence one going up, but not sequence two. And then it goes through um, here. Uh, we have decided to pull the reset bar low in the test bench. And that, that's why we uh, end up in state zero again, and so on and so forth. So um, again, I want to say that um, in other versions uh, of model sim, you can even see the state diagrams, a bubble diagram, and you can see schematics. You can follow the signal values in the schematic at any given point in time. So it's a great tool. Uh, thank you for watching this.